Hello, and welcome to the third and final episode of On Board the J.B. Ford. In this segment, we visit her stern. Back in 2001, an internet rumor was showing up in boatnut circles, where a few people were insisting that the triple expansion engine had been removed from the J.B. Ford. One of my key objectives in this visit was to prove or disprove that contention. Passage aft across the cluttered deck seemed a bit testy in daylight. By the time we finished with the bow, it was pitch black dark. In the darkness from atop the deckhouse roof, we can see the outline of the Ford's former hatches. Her smokestack is swallowed in the darkness. This is her emergency steering wheel. After the great storm of 1913, some of the captains remarked that they thought at least one member of the aft crew on every vessel should be qualified to wheel a boat in case the forward quarters were destroyed and no one from the forward crew could make it aft to the wheel. This requirement was never instituted. Now let's go down to her fantail. The first thing that catches your eye is the boat's spare propeller blade. The Coast Guard requires a spare blade, or bucket, as the old timers say. Here is her stern windlass. And the towing fair lead, or chalk. Here we see her emergency tiller, sometimes called the relieving tackle, and her towing chain stopper. Now let's go below. A look behind us. Now we have entered the engine room. A few steps backward and slightly up takes us to her hydraulic steering gear. You may recall those social media rumors that the Ford's engine had been removed. Well, now it's time to find out. This certainly looks like a 1903 triple expansion steam engine to me. The engine flaw that eventually led to her retirement came when a young engineer attempting to warm a relatively cold engine admitted steam without the drains being open. That cracked her cylinder casting. A short-term fix, which ended up becoming a long-term fix, was to place something similar to a giant C-clamp on the engine. In the end, that likely played a large part in the boat's withdrawal from service. Not a lot of her engine workings are readily visible. Mostly it's tie rods, crank webs and bearings. I'm also sure that none of this ever looked this crummy in her operational days. This is her engine. Steam may power the engine, but oil is its lifeblood. Every moving part must be constantly lubricated, and here we're looking at Oil Central. Here we see the Manzel lubricator. Cylinder oil is injected with the steam to lubricate the piston rings. This is the drip lubricator. Here oil is fed to the bearings by gravity. The drips are monitored through these small glass windows. Next to the oil system is the control system. The steam throttle is here. This is the reverse engine lever. The jet condenser lever controls the amount of condensed water for the engine exhaust. This is the jet condenser exhaust sometimes called the exhaust trunk. Here we have the engine revolution tachometer. And a standard guide is nice to have. High overhead, the engine trunk is capped with this skylight. The panels can be opened to help vent off some of the engine room's heat. 
Opening those way up there windows is done with a simple crank. Taking the walkway between the boilers it is easy to imagine just how hot things could get in the engine room. Of course our engine area was also a workspace. Anything mechanical to keep the boat running from broken pipes to making a shelf to hold the pilot house coffee pot was taken care of here. Over 15 years of sitting abandoned, the once spotless engine room was quite cluttered. No chief would have allowed it to look like this when the boat was operational. Our final stop here is deep down. Here we found the boat's propeller shaft. While there we felt the boat rock a bit. We'd been told that her fleet mate, the Alpina, would be in tonight to unload a storage cargo and the rocking was her arrival. Seen here unloading into the JB Ford's fleet mate, EM Ford, the Alpina is a 519 foot maritime class boat with about 13,000 tons of cargo aboard. Considering the size of the Alpina and the fact that we were aboard an abandoned vessel of 1903 vintage, well, let's see. The propeller shaft is here. We were here. The water line was about here. Now all it would take would be a little mistake by the Alpina coming in alongside a small crunch and... Yep. I think we should be leaving. What a good idea. Topside we cut through what appears to be the officer's dining room. Once again we got to admire the original 1903 woodwork. Then our last stop was the galley. This is the stove that cooked so many great meals. And this caught my eye. A big industrial mixer. Again, I considered bringing it home to my wife. Again, she said it was a good thing that I didn't. This was the only place where we opened doors to see what was inside. And there it was. A little mug that was calling my name. It was calling me to rescue it. Sorry, Lafarge. So at this moment, as I make this video on February 10th, 2021, and they are scrapping the J.B. Ford stern, this same mug, instead of lying smashed in a dumpster somewhere, resides in a place of honor on this historian's shelf. Have you subscribed yet? If you don't subscribe, the Crescent City gets it. Subscribe now. Don't make me do this.